and Andy Hyatt, who's the head of digital for Bernard Hodes Group, is going to talk first, and it's going to be about uh, that an integrated agency owns the idea. So, Andy, over to you. Okay. Hi, good evening. Um, I thought I'd start with a contention, because at least you can have a point of view that you can argue against. But principally, um, the big idea, the notion of the big idea is all about strategy. Um, and the point is that strategy without execution is worthless. There's no point coming up with a big idea if you can't execute it, if no one can see it. But the other side of the coin is that execution without strategy is also meaningless. There's no point coming up with lots of great, fantastic tactical campaigns if there's no salience behind them. Um, and the, the whole sort of the underlying principle behind this entire sort of five minute presentation is that. I um, started off with this. It's quite an, an interesting theory because when someone asked me about the big idea, I started sort of, as you do, Googling it to find out sort of who actually coined the phrase. Um, and I went to LinkedIn and went to LinkedIn Answers and, uh, and asked the question and thought, well, let's just glean some opinion, get some sort of uh, thoughts about sort of what people think. And the, the first thing is, no one really understands what the big idea is. A lot of people talk about it, but no one has a key definition. Um, but the, the sort of camps tend to split into sort of three areas. The first one, and I'll go on to the bottom left-hand side, this is sort of quite an interesting client view, which is really that the big idea is meaningless. It's all about sort of men comparing penis sizes. You know, this, this is a classic arrogant agency thing um, that you should just shut up, get on with it, and do the work for the client. And I'm sure that when we come on later and start talking about the client, if that argument, I'll be, I'll be interested to see how one goes forward. Buster's smiling there. Um, the next one on, the, on the, sort of the, the other side over there is about actually the, the, the digital and integrated agencies. They don't think strategically. They think in tactics. They may be very good at executing um, tactical campaigns, um, but principally they, they, they think just in terms of their channel. Um, but the th and the third theme is the sort of, I, I thought of the happy clappy type. It's a utopian view. The, sort of, uh, the head of digital media at uh, Wavrap Collins is about the Pixar theory, which the big idea is working seamlessly in an environment to, to, to come up with the, the most fantastic end product. Um, I think we all would like to be able to, 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 to aim for that, but in my experience of the last sort of 13 years, that's still an incredibly difficult thing to achieve, not just in one location, but sort of globally as well. Um, George Lewis, apparently, or so he claims, he's a chap who coined the phrase, the big idea. Um, and I think the whole point is... <laughs> You go go to his website and you'll see it. But uh, you know, he was a classic Madison Avenue madman. Um, and you think about the whole the, you know, the, the, the time that they started coming up with these ideas. These guys were, were arrogant. They were opinionated. They were outspoken. And they truly believed that advertising wasn't just about selling or promoting a product or service. They, they truly believed that their advertising should change the world. And I think that's a nice sort of context to put it in. They, they wanted to create this mystique about advertising that raised them above anyone else. And the thing is, is, is they enhance this mystique with coming up with these real iconic campaigns. And I use MTV. This is sort of the first one in the 60s. The I Want My MTV campaign. This is the first thing that sort of, um, George Lewis came up with, where he took something that was a mandatory, the MTV logo, and said, you know what, if we want to reach a younger audience, this is what we're going to have to change and completely reinvigorate the way we treat the logo. And the thing is, these campaigns were incredibly successful. And they came up with what seemed to be like an approach for advertising, which is really you come up with a killer strap line and some great visuals, and they usually did the trick. So I don't know if, how many of you remember the Heineken adverts with the Heineken refreshes the parts that the beers come out of reach. Um, and then audience started becoming hooked, and so the brand ad the advertising itself became a form of engagement. I had to actually put on the right-hand side what this was, because when I was showing this to some of my sort of digital team, they didn't actually realize what this was. They had never seen the Nescafe Gold Blend ads of the 80s. So... Um, <laughs> But to me, it started representing a change in the way that advertising and communications was going on. So here, the advert actually became a mini soap. And people will start to tune in just to see the advert. When you know, Nescafe would release and say, we have an advert going out at this time. And people would tune in just to see the advert, not the program. And as the audiences became hooked, and as the, sort of the process of developing advertising became hooked, the campaigns themselves became more adventurous. So here's one from the 90s. Uh, anyone remember this one? Anyone know this one? Yeah, the Tango ad, okay, again. Their approach was, was to sort of take the approach to, to lager advertising and apply it to soft drinks. It may seem a bit trite now, but then, fantastic, real sort of groundbreaking stuff. And then came the 90s, so the, the sort of noughties. Um, and the internet kind of challenged the status quo because they'd come up with this theory and this approach. And then suddenly, 
you've got these things when you can actually interact and engage. And Apple, to me, sort of epitomizes the start of it. And, and their sort of symbiotic relationship between the product itself and the advertising. So the whole mantra was about thinking different. Their product should be different. So everything should reflect what it is they do. So the, the creation of these new type of products. And then you started getting these little tactical executions, became interactive. They did more than the above-the-line advertising could do. And I use Nesquik as, as an example. This is an FMCG brand that had, it's not a big idea, they have a bunny. And the bunny's called Quickie, for those of you who don't know this one. Um, but Quickie itself had no salience to kids. And, they want, and Nesquik's a challenge. They wanted to make Quickie relevant to, to the, you know, the new generation. But that meant it had to compete with brands like Fox and Disney. And, the idea, you know, and, and this had to be salient across the entire world. So the, the client decided, well we'll, well, we'll use the internet as a channel to reach a mass market audience. And we'll, we'll come up with a concept that visually works, which is the treehouse. But the point is, it was an interactive environment where you started sort of learning more and more about the client and, and about, about, the, about the brand itself. And Nesquik themselves grew as a client in terms of understanding how to use this channel. Um, but what was interesting about this is, our, our sort of challenge was trying to um, outstrip Disney in terms of the amount of time that people spend on the site. And within a year of creating this site and this whole campaign, it did, it, it outperformed that in terms of the, like Hitwise data showed that actually the people were spending more time on a Nesquik site than if they were spending on a Disney site. Now if you think about the context of that from an advertising point, that's huge. This is a brand that's advertising their product competing with something like Disney that has huge amounts of content. Um, so engagement, engagement became king. But the question I'm, I'm asking really is, is there is a mantra behind that, but how much has really changed? Uh, does anyone know the Tiger Trap? Has anyone seen the Tiger Trap? Yeah. The, the Tiger Trap was something that um, Buick came up with um, in sort of the, the early 2000s. Um, and it was a whole product where um, it was more like a, a mini soap again. So uh, you could watch these videos and, and people would go golfing and they would come across on the, sort of, uh, on the golf course and might find a, a club. Uh, and as they bent down to pick it up, Tiger Woods walked out the bushes and said, hi guys, how are you doing? I'll tell you what, thanks for finding my club. Let's play around a golf, and the person who gets the nearest the hole can win my Buick. And they started to advertise this, and they used the, uh, the TiVo to advertise, the advertising channel, the TiVo, to advertise this. Great campaign, very successful, generated a lot of PR. But the question is, is it a new idea, or actually, is it just a rehash of previous ideas, just using new media? And I think that's one of the big tenets of the argument that's going on, is there's no real new ideas. People are just very good at rehashing the old ideas and just portraying them in a different way. I suppose the conclusion is, is that the, the big idea is coming from people who, who really will understand how to, how to manipulate all media. You know, the, the, the internet specialists are very good at understanding how to use and manipulate digital channels, and I've worked in some digital specialist agencies, and they're very good at that. But what they don't understand, they can't compare it in terms of the context of how this will work across TV or radio. They don't have the comparative benchmark to achieve that. So to get the best result, um, and, and, and as a sort of the, the whole landscape is becoming much more fragmented, the, the notion of a big idea, I think, has actually increased. The importance of the big idea has increased. But the people's, uh, the agency's ability to be able to come up with a big idea and sell the big idea, and I think that's, that's a big challenge as well. The ability to be able to sell that, um, has, they've been struggling. Um, and to me, it's agency, you know, the big idea, there's a, a symbiosis between coming up with the idea and actually the actual executing that idea. Because quite often, what you get in, in digital is the results come back very, very quickly. So you can see what elements of your idea are working well. The agencies that actually own the control, the strategy and the execution of that, and therefore can make those type of amends to make the strategy even more compelling, are the best place to own the idea. And in my experience, I think, I think at the moment, these are the integrated agencies. I thought I'd finish just on one point, um, which is really going back to the very beginning. Uh, this is something that I did uh, with DLKW. Um, and it was one project that got the entire agency working on. So we had above-the-line planners working with the digital planners. We had above-the-line creators working with the digital creatives, uh, with the, you know, the, the IA user experience consultants where the technology is working together. I'm not saying it was easy. Actually, it was incredibly difficult. And you're still <coughs> having to deal with you know, the, the, you know, what is quite a lot of arrogance in terms of why should we do this. Um, but the challenge here was to, to, to come up with a plan that enabled Tenor, and Tenor, sort of, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's an incontinence brand, to change the way that people felt about incontinence. It's, it's a huge, huge issue because people are getting older. There's a, there's a whole sort of social context about it. people are getting older. Incontinence actually is a lot more common than people think. And they used not just the website, but the technology on the website. So they're using things like blogs to get people engaging in the debate and actually understand the debate. And the early data on that shows that the site itself and the campaign behind that changes people's perceptions of incontinence. Not about Tenor. Tenor owned the debate, but they're changing people's perceptions. 
So maybe going back to sort of your George Lewis, that actually sort of a fully integrated idea can change the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>